Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we're going to do a very quick tutorial on how to use freezer paper when you're doing your FPP. Now I do want to highlight that freezer paper FPP is pretty much the same as FPP. There's just one minor difference and that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. When you are putting your blocks together, you're not going to stitch through the paper and directly on the line. Rather, we're going to fold on that line, move the paper out of the way, and just stitch the fabric. That means you don't need to shorten your stitch length to 1.2 millimeters. You can keep it at your 2.0 or your 2.5 stitch length. It also means at the end, all of your blocks are pieced and you don't have to rip paper off of the back, which is amazing. I'm going to walk you through freezer paper in just a minute, but before I do, I want to let you know that I feel like this method only applies to some areas of the FPP world. If I were to buy a FPP kit from Judy Niemeyer or Jacqueline DeJong, I think I got her name wrong, <laughs> but if I were to buy an FPP kit that already had the papers inside, I would probably still use that paper. And if I needed to copy it, I would still probably copy it onto regular paper only because they're very intricate. And I myself have not had a chance to actually test using freezer paper with a kit like that. The reason why I would advocate for using the paper is because if you do it right, as you're building out your kit in FPP, those smaller pieces all have registration marks that allow you to perfectly line up each section of the quilt top that you're building and keep all of your points. And you're going to kind of miss that if this paper is not on the back of your block. So if you're just trying to make a small FPP project, freezer paper is for you. If you are just trying to make standard blocks that are going to go into some sort of a traditional setting with maybe some sashing or lots of negative space and you just want to use FPP for the block, freezer paper is for you. I don't know that I would use freezer paper to make an entire FPP quilt, but you could try it and let me know in the comments down below if it worked for you. Okay, so what is freezer paper? Really simple. It's Freezer paper. Yeah, the same freezer paper that you buy to put stuff in your freezer paper. On one side of this paper, it's paper, and on the other side, it is a waxy finish. <laughs> so when you take a look at it down here, you'll be able to see that I was able to put this through my printer, and the printer printed on the paper side, but when I flip it over, I have this shiny side, which is where all the wax is. And the wax is the magic with FPP. As I'm pressing out my seams, this waxy substance on the back side of my paper is going to lightly grip my fabric, keeping me from having to glue or pin my fabric to the paper. It's going to keep everything nice and tidy and in place. But most importantly, because I am not going to sew through the paper and the fabric, which you'll see in just a minute, I don't have to rip the paper away when I'm all done. You can get freezer paper in a variety of ways and methods. You can buy it by the roll and cut it down to size if you'd like. What I typically do is grab a package of the eight and a half by 11 cut sheets from Amazon, which I will have linked in the first comment down below and the description box as well. That makes sure that I have a stack of paper that is ready to go in my printer. I just want to make sure that as I'm feeding it into the printer, I'm doing it so that the printer is going to print on the paper side, not the waxy side. So make sure you load this in the right way. That's all of the disclaimers about freezer paper. Let me get to the demonstration for you. In the world of FPP, you're going to have waste. And one of the things that I always struggle with is how big or small do I cut my pieces? Because I find what I'm trying to do is be extremely efficient with my cutting so that I have as little waste as possible. But it always causes me headaches. And so I have embraced that there is going to be waste and I cut bigger than is necessary. So for those of you that don't like to see wasted fabric, might want to turn away now. <laughs> for this block, I have chose three different fabric types. This yellow is going to go in the middle. The reds are going to be where my fabric twos are. And then the greens are going to be in the corner. And I think that'll help demonstrate how I'm building this out. If I'm using three different fabrics, it'll help minimize some of the confusion. In the world of FPP, what you typically do is you put the fabric behind the paper and you stitch on the line 
on the paper through the fabric underneath, but we're not gonna do that. The first thing that we're gonna do is take a straight edge. I like to use a ruler for this, and I'm just gonna come in and everywhere where I see one of these solid lines, I like to pre-fold it. That just makes my life a little bit easier once I have started putting pieces of fabric onto the template. When I'm folding this, I'm really only looking for the lines that are separating sections. So like fabric one to fabric two, fabric two to fabric three. I'm not gonna worry about the lines that are around the edge of the block, which is just identifying the seam allowance. All right, now that this is all creased, we're gonna lay it down and flip it over. On the back side, I can see all of those lines on my freezer paper because the crease marks are showing here. Then I'm gonna grab my first piece of fabric that I wanna put in section one. I'm gonna put the wrong side of the fabric to the wrong side of the freezer paper. And I just wanna make sure that I cover this entire square because this is where fabric number one goes. If I show you over here, you can see fabric one. I want to cover this entire square plus at least a quarter inch past each of these folded areas. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it in here a little bit. Just like that, I'm feeling through the fabric where those creases are and I can tell that I have got my fabric going more than a quarter inch past the block. Just gonna flip it over, come in with my hot iron and I'm only gonna press where fabric one is. I don't wanna press this piece against my mat because then yucky stuff from the mat will get on the back of my template. So that's why I only press this side. And now everything is held together. I didn't pin it, I didn't glue it, but I'm ready to start putting fabric two on. So I'm gonna find the first area where I want to secure number two. And I'm just gonna go right here. It doesn't matter which one I went with. This is just the one I happen to choose. I'm gonna fold back onto that crease that we made earlier, flip this over so I have a mat. And then if you have a add a quarter ruler, that would work great for this. I don't have one on hand, so I'm just gonna use a normal ruler. I'm gonna find the quarter inch registration mark on my ruler, which is this nice dotted line for me. I'm gonna put that right on the fold. Remember, I folded the paper back. I only see the fabric at this point. I'm gonna trim the fabric. This is going to be waste. Now I wanna grab one of my fabrics that are gonna be for fabric two. I'm gonna open the paper template back up and I'm gonna line up these raw edges and I will test flip this back to make sure it covers that entire triangle that I want fabric two to represent. If it does, this is where the freezer paper method comes in. I'm gonna fold the paper back again and all I'm gonna see this time is just the fabric. So I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and with my normal stitch length, I am going to stitch right next to that paper, not on top of the paper, but right next to the fold. All the way along the edge. Your next step is to press this out. So I push the template over and then I flip this over so that I have the fabric right side up. I finger press that down and then I get a hot iron and come in and just press that piece of fabric that I just attached. You can do this also from the top if it's easier. It doesn't matter which way you do it, just make sure that your iron doesn't touch the glossy sides of the paper. Now that fabric two is attached here, I know in the world of FPP, I keep building out by numbers. So I'm gonna put a two here, a two here, and a two here, just like I did before. Since the paper is attached to the fabric, I do have to separate a little bit. It doesn't take much effort to actually peel it back and it didn't leave a waxy residue on the fabric, which is really nice. I'm gonna come back in with my ruler and just like I did before, I'm gonna clean up this edge. I'm gonna trim it down. By the way, every time I cut pieces off, not all of them go in the trash. This is a big enough piece of scrap that I can put it back in my pile because as I'm continuing to work on my FPP project, I might need something that is that size. Once this is folded back, we're gonna do just like we did before. 
we're going to line up our rectangular piece that's going to go where our flying geese point unit is going to be. I can tell it's wider than my triangle piece. So I'm going to fold the paper back, take it to my sewing machine, and stitch right next to the paper, not through it, making sure that I grab both of those pieces of fabric. Bring this back to our mat push it over and finger press it down. I can press from the top or I can press from the back. Either way works. I actually really like pressing it from the fabric side because I feel like then I can have a better control over the fabric as it was pushed out away from the center. We're going to repeat that process two more times. Fold it back, trim it up. While I'm trimming, I'm going to go ahead and trim the other side as well. We'll peel it back right to that crease. That's why the creases come in handy because I can feel it as I'm peeling the waxy side off of the paper. Now I'm going to grab my last two triangles for fabric two, and we're going to stitch them on just like we did the other pieces. Remember I'm stitching right next to the paper not through it. Now I'm going to open up my template, push the fabric out away from that center block and I'll give it a nice press. Really not trying to press the whole block. I'm trying to just press the fabric that I just attached, focusing on that seam. But when I apply heat to these pieces, they're securing to the freezer paper. Now I'm gonna work on section three, and it's the same thing as we did before, just a different section and a different fabric. So I'm gonna find the line between two and three, Fold my template back, trim it a quarter inch away. You'll notice I have trimmed all of the section threes away. I just did that to make my process a little bit faster. Assembly line sewing. I didn't have to wait to trim until I was ready to sew on. I could trim all four of those sections at once. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. We're just going to do fabric three in the corner and this time I want to make sure that when I flip it over it covers this entire piece of paper. So I'm going to line up my raw edge here, fold the template under, take it to my sewing machine and stitch right next to the paper. Once I've secured on the green fabric I'm going to come in with my iron and press that down. Then I'm going to move on to the next one, fold the template under, align the raw edge of the fabric, take it to the machine and stitch. Pull the template back out, push the fabric over, Give it a good press. You're just going to keep repeating those steps time after time until you have secured all of your fabric threes. Fold the template under, line up the raw edge. So pull the template back out, press the fabric over and apply your heat. It's really that simple. It might feel a little confusing at first, but once you start building out some of these blocks, it becomes muscle memory. And so you'll end up being able to do it in your sleep. So this is the block once it is all put together, but it's not a block that I put into a quilt top or do something with because it's not squared yet. 
And that's the next step. So I'm going to flip this over so I see my template face up. And the first thing I'm going to look for is to make sure I see that solid line about a quarter inch inside from where the edge of the paper is. If I trimmed this on the solid line and not a quarter inch away from it when I was cutting the template out, then I need to make sure that when I square this up, I do so a quarter inch away from the edge of the paper. In my case, I made sure to leave that quarter inch edge all the way around. So all I have to do is put my quarter inch on top of that drawn line, which should make the template line up nicely with the ruler, I'm going to come in with my rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut each side. Once all of that's done, you have a template that looks like this. Definitely a finished block that I would be proud to put in any project. And you can see fabric one is in the center. Fabric two are the four triangles surrounding the center block, and then fabric three are the corner triangles. So pretty easy to put together. And here's the best part. When I am done with this and I wanna use the template for my next block, all I have to do is separate the paper from the fabric, and it comes off pretty easily. I just peel it back. If there was an area where I might have gotten a couple of stitches in the paper, like I had here, because it's only a couple of stitches, it just pops right off and the thread stays on the block. So now I've got a template that I can use to make another one of these blocks. And I have a finished block that is squared up perfectly. All of my points are absolutely spot on. This is squared and ready to go into my project. So that's it, FPP using freezer paper. It is so super easy and I hope it made sense to you. If it was a little confusing, just remember that this is one of those techniques that just takes a little bit of muscle memory. Doing more and more blocks of this is going to help set that rhythm of trim, stitch, press every single step of the way. I hope you'll give it a try. Let me know in the comments down below if this is a technique that you are excited to put in your arsenal. And if you do happen to make something using freezer paper, I'd love to see pictures of that. Make sure to tag me on Instagram or post a picture of it in the Facebook group. Thanks, friends. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!